We're gonna restart this because I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna be so mad. Can I? Can you bear with me as I fix this? Because Jeff saw it. He saw it. <laughs> it said the new chapter. Streamlabs. Old chapter. No, but oh, before. Yes, yes, yes. Streamlabs right. messes me up. Hold on. I'm gonna fix it, and I will show you. There's Actually, Winnie. will it play if I do this? <laughs> Winnie, you're too hot, buddy. You're too hot. I'm gonna fix it. There you I'm go, gonna bud. fix it. There you go. See, oh, it changed been... it to the roaming. Why did you do that? Okay. Yes, we are live on the internet. Let's do it. I know about the internet. <laughs> I've heard of this. All right, redo. We'll good come boy, back. Good boy, Winnie. Good boy. In, oh, actually, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, let's see if it works this time. It's Magical Theory Podcast time. And now we can actually start. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Hello. How are y'all doing this fine October Good, weekend? It rained it's mid-October. A ton here yesterday. It poured. Yes, and it cooled everything down. Mm -hmm. So we went and got a drink last night out, yes. and it was in the 60s and rainy and it was like we had an umbrella y'all i was freezing and i was just like yes <laughs> i'm so sorry for people who live it's in like actual home. weather but i'm like 66 degrees no we, we shall live I, in the desert i can't handle forever. that's what jeff said to me he was like we can't leave because <laughs> you wouldn't be able to handle <laughs> it <laughs> so yeah we had and we so not only was it cold but we also used an umbrella which we i did we did. Fun on the fact, way back, it rained. We only own one umbrella. <laughs> yes. We, it, look, we used to have more than one, but I don't know. The three places we've lived, it like never, ever rains. And when it does, it's so much rain that you generally don't go outside. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Fresno did not rain. It never rained in Fresno. No. Nope. It never rained here. It does here. not rain. It, it feels like it's rained here way more than it ever no, it did in Fresno. No, it actually has. Yeah. Yeah. Can Even frequency, it. let alone the just the intensity of monsoons. I mean, we had, we got an yeah. inch yesterday, an inch of rain. It's a ton of rain. Yeah. It's a lot of rain. It was a lot. Um, I started playing Baldur's Gate 3. Yes, yeah, so you love it. And I can't stop playing it. It was the first topic of conversation when we got out. We we got out, we sat down. Oh my gosh. We ordered a drink, and then well, cause, so boom, I made Baldur's Gate 3. My, my bad plans character, my D&D &D character, Kins, she's a half-elf druid, and I kind of made her. I gave her, because it's a game, I can give her whatever I want, really, like, in terms mm -hmm. of spells. So I gave her, like, a um, a necromantic uh, chill touch <laughs> spell. And I was like, this seems cool. So basically, I start every combat and I do that. I like That's we, your opener? We get into range where it, we're not in combat. We're not in confrontation. I'm, like, far enough away. And then I just ch chill touch to surprise attack. Is, it, is chill touch not a touch spell? <laughs> no, it's a range. Them? It's 18 meters is is that spell one that does more damage if somebody is already hurt? I don't I know, know, but it... the dead does, which I believe is also necromancy. But they can't heal. It lowers. Oh. I think that's what it said. Okay, I don't know. That's the secondary piece. Nice. It that's says good. that you it can't heal. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been playing it, and so it's uh, made by the same, or it's being developed, it's still in early access, but it's being developed by the same people who made Divinity Original Sin 3, which yeah. we also enjoy. It has a lot of similar, uh, it's a similar kind of design, um, an isometric view of a camera, and it's turn-based, of course, It's like, mm -hmm. but it's, so we played Divinity with like the intention of making our D and D characters, but this is actual D and D. Like I roll, yes. and it's and I will really fun. be making Jesse <laughs> when we whenever we wind up playing. We'll probably play with Vin and Jay or Jamie. Oh my gosh! Well, because don't foursome. they have it? I don't know if they have it already. Oh, in early access, they might. They might. We'll, we'll wait until it comes all the way. I out. think it's coming out in twenty twenty. Three. The only games I early you early access many games because you cover them and are I do uh, good at it. I only do MMOs and only a select <laughs> number of them early. Yeah, anyone playing Ashes of Creation hit up or Jeffrey. Uh, yeah, everything else I'm like four or five years late. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, it was my birthday this week, this birthday. Wednesday. It feels like it was birthday forever week. ago. But I did big, stream big and I made people watch me play games that are um, that I ha they have played before, but uh, wouldn't really pick up again. Just because it's like it's uh, point and click, they like, can get a little like tedious and I faced that because I didn't remember what I was doing or where I was like my status of like why do I have these things in my bag what am I supposed to do what quest or what uh clues did the people give me couldn't remember any of it so I spent like the first 30 minutes I think just wandering back and forth but then once I started making progress it was like boom 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 for a game called shindig I didn't mention that shindig it was really cute you know if you can believe it my favorite MMO shadow ban is mm -hmm. point and click Oh. It was not WASD. W A S D. It was point and click. Okay. Yeah. So, how does that work? Do you go through a story? No. You oh. right click on the ground and it moves you there. Oh. So, you can use gotcha. your mini map gotcha. or like what you're seeing. Yeah. 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 Um, I was thinking about other birthday events. We went to a I place ate called lasagna. Bookman's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which, which was also in Tucson. You're like, oh, you went to Bookman. <gasps> yes. That's yeah, where got I got this egg. wand. And the wand. That's the this Snape wand, right? This is my Snape wand. Mm -hmm. It has, it's really hard to tell like the detail on the camera, but you can see that it's etched with some stuff. This is like the little symbol yeah, that's like right there. Interesting. Yeah. Then I bought the Hogwarts Legacy egg. Yeah, where did that go? It's on the shelf right oh, there. Oh, there it is, yeah. <laughs> you can kind of see, it's behind Jeff's shoulder. Yeah, that right there. To the other side. Yeah, right there. <laughs> I made a short about it, so you might have seen yeah, me holding yeah. it being like... It was so great. I mean, I don't know what caused you to pick it up. I guess maybe you saw the... I was wondering... Because I was not near you right away. So Bookman's is like a, a buy-sell trade place. place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they have bookshelves and bookshelves and bookshelves of books, but they also have, uh, you know, like... Funko Pops, like fandom stuff. It's not as as like robust Wand. as no. a comic store or right. like a game store, but they do have that sort of stuff. They also have yep. instruments, yep. Um, so they have like a variety of things. So I I basically a lot just of video roam. Games too. I don't look for books mostly because, and I said this to you. This is like this was my rationale when we moved, and I got rid of a lot of the memoirs and stuff, even some that I hadn't started reading. I was like, okay, my rationale is I'll just check it out from the library like I don't the number of times we've moved it's like <laughs> books are a big and heavy part of what we move so yes, we, we donated to like uh, little free libraries around our town and just like you know re Other library, gifted our, libraries. Yeah. our books that we have owned so I wasn't looking for books I was just going yeah. down the different uh walkways and all of a sudden, I just saw this egg with this. You know how I am. I'm looking for Hogwarts. Any second that I see a swirl, I'm like, <laughs> ancient magic flame. And so it was just the most perfect thing that I could yes. stumble upon. It was eye level My on the shelf. My recollection was, so. I was like, you should get it. Yeah. And you were like, it's $26. It's <laughs> I'm not going to pay $26 and I'm like, for yes, a paperweight egg. But it's egg. too perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's an egg and it like literally looks like the symbol. Then I posted a poll on Instagram, on my Instagram story, and I was like, should you're, I buy this? And, and most I needed people, more allies in the pressure. There were a couple people who were reasonable with the money being like, I don't know a paperweight. But then other people were like, ancient magic and yeah. are you a witch or not was also mm -hmm. an option. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was nice. It was good. It was it was a good purchase. It's oh, uh, it's startlingly accurate. Yeah. And then yes, we went and you had you said lasagna. I had birthday lasagna. Birthday lasagna. Lasagna is my favorite That's your cake because lasagna is cake. Lasagna is cake. Of course. And yeah, it was really really great. Yeah. Love that place. And then pretty chill. I was back at work for half a week. I had a half week, which was fun. Kind of good timing oh, yeah, with your yeah, birthday. Yeah. And uh, I was kind of back at it, and we watched Critical Role. <gasps> oh my gosh! For those y'all who who watch no Critical spoilers. Role but aren't caught up, this is this was probably my favorite episode. It was an intense episode for I sure. I guess the last two have been my favorite <clears throat> episodes, yeah. but this one in particular. I'm not someone. I'll just say this: I'm not someone who typically cares about combat, but at this point, the combat is. Very important there to me. For, there are stakes for 
the situation they're in. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so it was good. Catch yeah, that, so that was fun. That was, that was the week. Yeah. Birthday week. Mm-hmm. It was nice. Um, I see Gryffindor Lad is rereading the Harry Potter books. This is perfect because we, yeah. we go one chapter You're at a time. You're going to catch up with us. You're definitely going to catch up to us. We're we're in the last chapter of we Goblet of Fire. We are done with Goblet of Fire. We are done yeah. with it. <laughs> Today's episode is the... I, I didn't think we'd ever see the day. Well, it's we such a long book. There's book. so many chapters, yep. and the chapters are long. That's the other thing yep. is that, and and it was like we were moving. It was a whole thing. We at, we brought back the podcast with I Goblet, know. right? Yes. And so, because we were on a little <laughs> hiatus, um, and then a longer hiatus. No, yeah, the long the longer During hiatus the book, was right? what I meant. Well, we moved like that. To me, is the little mm. hiatus, and mm. then the the bigger hiatus was between prisoner and. Was it between books? I don't know. Either way. Nobody knows. Yes. It was. <laughs> we were live on Twitch. Now we're live on YouTube. Many changes. We were not we have live and then we started. A jingle live. now. It's very official. Yeah. The jingle <laughs> was what took us over the top. Yeah. Uh, well, JP, if you've never tuned in to Critical Role or anyone else who hasn't, you can, if you have Amazon Prime, they have an animated series now um I just watch the show just well okay <laughs> if you want to catch up you could just start with campaign three but there's a lot so this is me i am fully on board with campaign three but they lit they all exist in the same world so there are things and references that i don't fully understand the uh it's a massive undertaking it is a i lot. don't mean to be casual about it it's a lot of hours what i'm of saying content. is if they continue on and go and make an animated series yes. for their entire campaigns then you can get but that costs money and the, the show does not it's on youtube for free it is on youtube for free which is good to know well, they have the uh, the recaps that they did for um, uh, Mighty Nine. There were those animated ones that were, uh, uh, they were short. Were those unofficial? That that's on their channel. They oh. have it. There's a playlist and it has stuff. Yeah. Anyway, um, Dimension Twenty also has good stuff. Yeah, they do. Shorter, less harder or easier to it's, um It's edited see beginning to end. in the sense of like it's uh more like you don't have a, you know how in D&D &D there's like a lot of kind of downtime, people are figuring stuff out. It's not a lot. It seems that they're pretty fast-paced even in their gameplay, but it's edited uh it's noticeable. to to get it, they're like an hour, yeah. hour and a half per episode. At most, yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty reasonable. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and they're more condensed. Yeah. Like there's only like eight episodes or ten episodes or something like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh no, it's so the Order of the Phoenix we're going to be talking about. It's also for... long, yeah. <laughs> we're, a, just from here on out, it's like, okay, long. Magical Theory yeah. podcast. I remember when we first started the podcast, you like, I don't remember what the number is, but you looked at the number Where of the chapters. Point is. And you were looking it's in at... It's Order of Phoenix. Because I think what you said to me is like, okay, <clears> if we're going to do this, this is... Five years. Yeah, or if so, we took at no least breaks. Yeah. Five years. It's long. So. It's already been three years or something and we took a break. <laughs> Aww. And we're not halfway. Aww. Because halfway is in Order of Phoenix. Oh my gosh. Yep. Well. So. Expelliarmus. Expelliarmus. <laughs> we have every week, now that we're leading up to Hogwarts Legacy, I don't know yes. how it'll turn out when February comes around, uh, what we'll be doing with the podcast. But well, that's we'll probably hide February. Anyway for yeah, that's a little bit. oh, that's true. We're probably gonna take a break to and then sort out what makes sense. You know, speed run Hogwarts talk Legacy. Each no. Talk about specific questions. I'm not gonna speed run it. I'm just gonna play everything. No, you're gonna kins it. I'm gonna be so slow. So we have the first part is about Hogwarts Legacy lore, and we pull something random out of this Gryffindor cup, and we talk about it in context of Hogwarts Legacy. So sometimes it's things like. Well, last week was Extendable Ears, so we know that that was invented by Fred and George, so it's not going to be in Hogwarts Legacy, but we talk about kind of the background of it, and in general, we're thinking about magical objects. So this week, we had um, the three clues I gave, which I, I think that the clues, I think I'm getting better at clues in the yes. sense of I want it to be engaging. Guarded was a really good clue. I don't want it to be because... simple. You could get this on the first one with guarded, but yeah. it would be a guess because the other things are guarded. I believe Cindy did. Yeah. <laughs> so the clues, Philosopher's Stone the three whatever. clues are guarded. Yep. 
Unplottable. Unplottable. Mm. And prison. Prison. Yeah. I mean, prison gives it. Although we, somebody pointed out that it Ner- could be. Nermengard. Yeah. Nermengard. Is that how I say it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know I if I've ever said that. I didn't out loud. look at. Yeah, I know. I only read things. That's yeah. this is the problem with books is that like unless it's because I know there are audio versions that are read by a person. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I don't. I haven't listened to all the audiobooks. No. I only listened. Why did I listen to? Oh, it was when we did Bit book club during the pandemic. We did book club on. It was on Zoom, but we coordinated it through Discord. And yep. I was trying to read faster, so I just picked up the audiobook sometimes and just listened to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I listened to the audiobook while I was reading the text in the actual book so I, so that I could focus <laughs> and understand what was being said. So the password is Askvan. Yes, it sure is. Now, our poll Hence the question. for today, the poll is, how do you think we'll see Askvan in Hogwarts Legacy? And the options, wow, now we have all votes, or votes for all the options. I just threw, basically... Did you vote for that? I didn't, I don't vote in the okay, polls. Okay, okay, it's just highlighted because oh, it has the most Oh, it's just highlighted right because now. it's the most, yeah. I see, okay. So the options are through a pensive memory, uh, official visit with a prisoner, mm-hmm. just mentioned in the Daily Prophet. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't think it's in the game. Yeah. So those are the four. Usually I just come up with the poll the day of, the morning of, half an hour, maybe 15 minutes before, and I just... Whatever comes into my brain, these are the good. options. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes if I can't I, think I of enough, think, I say other. I, I think we're going to go there. You think we're going to actually go there? Yeah. So let's talk about Azkaban itself, the history of it, before we get Terrible. into these options. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. There's, there's some ministers involved, and I went, so I went to two sources. Yeah, one of them is Lestrange, right? Uh, well, there's lots of ministers, but the person... That. So, okay, let's back up. The very beginning. Mm. Azkaban has existed since the 15th century. It originally was not a prison at all. Right. Um, so this... It's like an island, right? It was... For, yes, it was first an island, and there was a fortress. Yeah, there's already the fortress. It was... It was like a dark fortress, right? No, the fortress was built. Okay. And the fortress never appeared on the map, and it's believed that the that it was created or enlarged by magical means. Okay. And the fortress was home for some guy named Ecrisdus. E- I don't know if that's how you say his name. I'm fine with it. I'm pretty sure JP mentioned Ecrisdus in one of the live streams before, because I... Don't know who this... Like, I don't commit this to memory. This is all from wizardingworld.com. And he was a practitioner of the dark arts and basically yes. lured fishermen, tortured them, and killed them. Muggle sail- sailors. He just did that just for fun. Just for fun. He was like, oh, I, what, what am I going to do with my life? Make, I have yeah. magic. What am I going to do with it? <clears throat> I'm just going to torture muggles. Murder lighthouse. I mean, <laughs> murder lighthouse. First thing that pops to my mind, for sure, if I had magic, probably murder lighthouse. And when this guy died, like Christus, he, um, the concealment charms faded away. And that's when the ministry was like, oh, there's an island here. Yeah. Or a building or something. Yeah. So they went to go investigate, and they were like, oh, there are Dementors here. So basically, the Dementors were feeding off of the pain that was... It's kind of interesting. It was just like residue of pain. Or they just came there? Uh, They were already there? they, they, They found the Dementors there. Okay. But we don't know if it Christus, what his relationship to... Dementors was. They thrived there. Like I, it didn't say in the initial part that it was Dementors, but Dementors feed off of pain and suffering. Yes. And so they, I think that when the concealment charms went away, they probably were like attracted to it. Is my so you think understanding. It's after this guy dies? Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting. So then, when the ministry found it, there were all of these Dementors and. 
it says in this uh, entry, many feared a horrible revenge if they took away a habitat where they appeared to thrive. So they were afraid to destroy it because they were like, what's going to happen with the Dementors? Yeah, it's like being like, <laughs> I'm not going to deal with this wasps, wasp's nest because the wasps be might be mad. angry. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, wa but you can overpower wasps. I don't. I don't think Demon people wasps. thought that they. I guess you would probably need yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of magic and wizards to. It seems like the way it's framed is that they were very powerful creatures. You would have to battle them for sure. And that they couldn't be killed. I don't know. Maybe people didn't realize the Patronus well, they charm. They can't be could. killed. Don't give them a breeding ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. So well, it's not even clear that they do breed. So. Interesting. Well, okay. what happened next was that they left it abandoned for many. They just let it sit there for many years, and it says a home to continually breeding dementors. Mm -hmm. So then, <laughs> the okay, this was the other piece. So while that's going on, that exists. The international statute of secrecy was or. Uh, the that was like a big deal because. Witches and wizards were being imprisoned, but what would yeah. happen is that they would break out. And so there would be lots of noise, and so the international statute of secrecy was, like, under threat. And so people were like, oh, no, like, we have we have people that we, witches and wizards were putting in prison, but they keep escaping, and it keeps, like, uh, calling attention to us. So then um, the plan, the original plan was to create a remote prison off of some Hebridean island, and <laughs> it was all getting planned planned out, but then, this was in the year, what is the year, 1718, though, when Damascus Roll, sorry, not Damascus, Damocles Roll became minister. So this guy, he's minister in 1718, is like, hey, Instead of this prison that we're going to build off this remote island, why don't we just repurpose Azkaban? <laughs> the Dementors will keep the prisoners in suggestion. there. It says in here, it says sadistic by nature. <laughs> Roll scrapped. Roll is? Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> scrapped the plans for the new prison and insisted on using Azkaban. <laughs> like, what? Are you okay, buddy? Anyway... In spite of opposition from many wizards, among them experts on both Dementors and buildings with Azkaban's kind of dark history, he just went with his plan, and that's what happened. After Roll was Perseus Parkinson, so you know that Azkaban just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the time that Eldritch Diggory took over as as minister. Oh, rip, rip so I know. So that was Eldritch was the one after Parkinson in okay. 1733. So this is like a, a decade, a more than a decade later, he takes over. So then, also I love how his name is Eldritch. Yeah. <laughs> Eldritch Diggory. Eldritch Blast. So it was already operating, and then. Um, there were no breakouts, no breaches of security. It seemed that it was working well, but then he realized what the condi conditions were like. Uh, there was a graveyard that was made because prisoners went insane and died, and so he was just like, there has to be another option. <laughs> we cannot have this prison with dementors and torturing people and making them shells of humans. Yeah. So he made a committee, and the committee were saying that the Dementors were mostly confined to the island because of the souls that were being supplied. They were basically feeding on these people, and if they didn't have prisoners there, then they would leave the prison and go to the mainland. And he was just like, come on, people. But then he died of dragon pox. <laughs> oh, man. Ugh. Yeah. So then after that, uh, it says from that time, which I told you was 1733, or no, actually he died in 47, 1747, from that time until Kingsley Shacklebolt, nobody did anything. They just turned the other way. Every minister after that was just ignoring it. 
And they... Fudge literally brought them to a school. I know! I know! Yeah. They're like, oh yeah, let's do this. Most justify their attitude by pointing the prison's perfect record at keeping prisoners locked up. Oops. They're like, oh, no one breaks out anymore. Oops. Two in two books. Yeah. And then we're going to have ten more next book. Just the most ridiculous thing. I... I... It, it is because you is pass ridiculous. it down, and it's just like, well, this is just how the world is. It's that sort momentum of, thing. of bad things, the momentum of bad things. But then you know, like <laughs> the Dementors allied themselves with Voldemort, though. Yeah. So like, no, of course they did. But I mean, after that, well, oh, I don't know. I guess like, what they do you can't, do? Uh, they don't. What is Voldemort. it that you're gonna do? Have a soul. <laughs> now I want to know who discovered the Patronus charm. Good who, question. Who made that? Who who Good figured question. out that? Oh, I there just blasted this. There were a lot of comments that yeah, I would let's like go. to return let's to go because back. I think specifically re- reflecting on whether we'd go. Yeah. Where would you like me to start? The, the, oh, oh, sorry. Or uh, oh. why would we go there? No, why would no. we go? Oh, why would we go to Azkaban as a prisoner or to help someone escape? What I was thinking when I wrote that as an option of like us going there is what if somebody has important information for us that could help us understand something that we don't know already. So I actually have something to, we'll come back to the comments, but I do have yeah, something that yeah. is um, the dark stories of Azkaban. This is from Wizarding World also. It's in the description. Okay. Okay. Oh, dear. (laughs) Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Here we go. So, oops, all the way over here. This tells us, like, people who were in prison, and there are people who are wrongfully imprisoned as well, but Sirius Black had some vital information that we could learn about if we took his memories and, like, looked at them. Like, we could find out that Peter Pettigrew didn't actually die or he did he wasn't murdered or something mm-hmm. like that uh then you have the baddies like the gaunts don't seem like i would ever want to encounter even if they are confined into a prison percival dumbledore poor little dumbledore's father hagrid also i can't believe they sent hagrid to azkaban even if it was a brief time is it always a life sentence i guess not maybe yeah, that's an interesting question. Like Percival Dumbledore got a life sentence. Yes, he did. Did it okay. say was serious life sentence also? Yeah. Well, serious. Well, at least they were like he killed thirteen people. Right, right. But if there's, I don't even think so we're there sure no, that Percival killed anybody. I feel like we kind of talked about this at some point. Of like, is there no middle ground? Like, is there no intermediary place? They should have built a second look. They should have built it in the remote island anyway. It's and all had maximum like maximum security <laughs> permanent. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think about this idea of like, why would we go to Ask Man? I think both of those are good ideas. I think. What if someone was wrongfully convicted of a crime? I think it's more likely the place. So as mm. you know, I've talked to you a lot about a more general theory of the game. Yeah. That the island that Azkaban is built on and this fortress before it, like, is important to ancient magic. There's that there's maybe a reason and this is all this is pure speculation because what you just shared with us doesn't point to this. Yeah. We don't actually know like when the Dementors arrived or why. Uh Uh-huh. But that's my feeling, is that we're going to go places that are, like, really powerful, powerfully connected with some type of magic. I wouldn't be surprised if, for example, like, the veil came from that that island or something like that. Yeah, what's interesting to me is the idea that, and I don't know if I read the, ex- or if I highlighted the exact quote from here, is that there that the the dementors were there already before they were prisoners which means it feels to me that some essence of soul or pain or some re- residue was left behind yeah, you know I mean, yes yeah 
And like that... Which is confusing in and of itself. It does seem confusing. It also seems confusing that when the guy died, if he was the one who used magic to enlarge it, that it still persists. I guess maybe I'm thinking too much of like, oh, concentration versus like a permanent <laughs> sort of thing of like, yeah. this is just how it is now. Like, if you died and you did this, would the magic fade away? Or is it... I don't know. I, I also think from a... Just a game standpoint, mm -hmm. if I was making a Harry Potter game, I would want Azkaban. Yeah. Because it just, first of all, Dementors are excellent enemies to have because they're spooky mm -hmm. and powerful. And then it's easier, I think, to, to take you, us, the character, to that place than to justify like encountering them in kind of in the wild, Yeah. so to speak, from a game standpoint. Yeah. So it's going to be like, you know, we we have some we're going to have some reason to go there. And to me, it, all signs point to we're uncovering things that have been hidden. So yeah. I could imagine something being hidden there. Well, let me show you. I mean, we, you know, we know in Harry Potter there's this thing of like, oh, it's Gringotts or Hogwarts, those are the top two places to protect something. I, you know, you could easily put Azkaban on that list as like, hey, this is also a place that yeah. You could protect something. Hide it. Yeah. Let me show you. Especially if the Dementors don't care about it. Yeah. This is from the pre, uh, what do you call it? The reveal trailer. Yeah. We, okay, ignore these creepy dudes. I love how they walk. They're so <laughs> yeah, creepy though. <laughs> and the, the little eyes. So I put it on point two five speed. Yeah, it's muted. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, look at how they move. What is mm. this? What is this from the reveal trailer? No, it's Azkaban. Like, look at how many, they're just roaming, and there seems to be, is that a chair? This is, it I, does look I like need a to chair, zoom yes. in on this eventually, once this last little buddy kind of clears out. In the middle. No, it's not a chair, it's a gate. It's a gate door. It's a gate. It's a it gate looked like a, like a throne or something it did, like that. It did, it did. And you see that little, can you see water in that little crack? This is when I'm like, what's... Which little crack? You, in the, down no, the center? No, I just see sky. Okay. Okay. But that, Azkaban has that in the images that we've seen elsewhere. It mm. has this long, yes. narrow, yeah. vertical mm -hmm. window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean... Obviously, there's going to be tweaks. I don't think anything is going to have fidelity to, like, the way it's described in the book or the way we saw it in the movie. Precise fidelity. There's going to be changes. It might not yeah. be as big. But it, to me, this is clearly Azkaban. Yeah. And the prominence of it being in the reveal trailer suggests to me that, like, it, we're going to go there. Yeah, I hope that it wasn't scrapped <laughs> by the time. I don't but think then, it would make it to a trailer but if I it was think... scrapped. I, you have to I be mean, sure about it to put it into the trailer. Yeah, but this is also what I'm saying is that it, there's no characters in this. It's just it could just be like a cutscene memory it, it sort of thing. Could like be. It, it could be like the intro to the game of like spooky, scary, spooky Harry Potter stuff that you know about. And so they only rendered it as this cutscene type. Unless which is, someone it, tried right, to replicate it. Possible. No, no. Big is Nurmengard also Dementor no, that infested? Was, That's no, Grindelwald cool. made it, and he did. It was not. No, it was not. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Um, Fig taking us there to get someone out or ask a prisoner questions. Uh, now I had not considered this. Visiting if, a prisoner. I mean, that if, is really interesting. Well, because we and just saw just be a cut scene. Barty Crouch Jr. And because I was thinking, like, if it, when I was first going through this thought process, I was like, unplottable. How would we stumble upon it? And it's like, no, but there are visitors. So there would need to be. What if our parents are in Azkaban? There's probably a secret keeper. Oh, our parents? Yeah, could be. I don't know. I think it's. I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can see other witches and wizards or professors cast the Patronus charm if we can't cast it ourselves. That I, seems... So I see Gryffindor lads comment as well about whether or not there will be... That it, it is a lot of detail and animations to put in, but I, mm -hmm. 
I think it's going to be in there. I think it's going to be in there because it's, it's like a huge draw. I understand Quidditch yeah. isn't in there, and that's also a huge draw, but... Yeah, so I guess I could see. I could just see it, a and burst specifically of light, for the reasons you know? that he's pointing out. Right, 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 right. But yeah, I, uh, I guess I'm holding out hope. <laughs> okay, Alexis has an idea of maybe not using a Patronus, but being able to control the Dementors, what? perhaps with our ancient magic. Oh, that would be man. wild. Are we? I refuse. Are we just the all-powerful being that, like, like a uh, like baby Jack Jack from The Incredibles? We don't know how to use our power. We're just like <laughs> laser, laser eyes. Yes, we are. We are Jack Jack. <laughs> We're Jack Jack. Aww. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could see it. I mean, yeah. Depends. I don't know. Alexis also appears to be uh, stoking a conspiracy theory of Big, <laughs> this, I agree he mysteriously completely. died of dragon pucks. Poor Diggories. The poor Diggories. Cindy Patronus. I could see Cindy Patronus making the Patronus chart. <laughs> yes. Um, is it a big deal that I would watch a Dementor suck out someone's soul? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we see it in the movie, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't help them. That that's also kind of like, well, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I know. I just still can't curious, get over just Fudge curious. just being like, oh, you just take that guy's soul. I'm scared. Yeah, but yeah. Ridiculous. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, wait, wait. Which one would you vote for? Did you say that already? I did vote. Oh, you did vote. I, I said official visit. Yeah. Because I thought we would actually go there, and that was the only option that we could actually go there. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't actually think that's the reason. I still think it's memory. <laughs> I, I think it's for I didn't something vote, but... being protected mm-hmm. there. I mean, we know there's those dungeons with the numbers, and I, there's going to be one there. We're going to have to fight through these to get to the dungeon to fight, you know, alt, Ultra Dementor. I mean, Super if we're going to have to fight Dementors, I already fought Dementors in Lego Harry Potter, and my character died, like, 15 times. Like, because it's just, once it grabs you and starts, like, taking your soul, it's... Do Legos have souls? <laughs> it's in, Yeah, they, they stick Harry like Potter's it. soul. He's actually a horcrux. Um, <laughs> it's kind... It's very difficult to disengage, so I basically have to switch to another character... And that person needs to try to help me with the Patronus charm, but it's really difficult. This is why we need a companion. Yeah. To help us. Yeah. Fig can be our Ravenclaw. Maybe the Ravenclaw companion is really good with Patronuses. Maybe it is a Dementor. <laughs> the, Raven- Poppy's a Dementor. the Ravenclaw companion is a Dementor. If uh, you pull back the hood of a Dementor, boom, Poppy. Poppy. <laughs> Poppy Ganda. Poppy. I'm Poppy. Poppy. <laughs> I still need to make that edit. Yeah, but I, but I, it's this is in that series of question marks that I think we have that isn't answered really. Mm-hmm. Of like, will we leave the Scottish Highlands? I mean, there yeah. seems to be strong evidence that we're going to a goblin place that appears to me to be Gringotts because we see the chandelier. Yeah, and this is also evidence that we would leave to go to this island where Azkaban is. What if there's a portal to Azkaban? That's what How I think it's How crazy be. would that be? Quick, quick portal. Why would we have a portal? Because there's something important <laughs> there. And the portal was created by Merlin. Oh my gosh. Wow. Merles, big Merles. <laughs> it's called Dementors Kiss, not Dementors <laughs> Suck. <laughs> okay. No, they suck your soul out. <laughs> there it is. Legos have souls. They're particularly fond of the souls of one's feet. <laughs> Yes, oh, we gosh. are building a Lego right now. We are. It's super fun. We're not putting them on the ground, though. We need to no, no, choke on them. No, no, no. It's going to have a prominent place. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, it's a good one. It's a good one. We got to draw the next weeks. Am I drawing? Yeah. All right. Oh, I always look in there. They're all face down. Like, somehow they're all upside down. I have three in my hand. Okay. Oh. Yep. Did you see it? Did y'all nope, see it? I didn't see it. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got next week's password. Oh, actually, it's not next week. It is two weeks from today because we're going to be out of town this coming weekend. Yes. Uh, so 
we're going to be starting Order of the Phoenix, so you can grab your Order of the Phoenix copies or not. Jeff recaps every single week with what the Summer Day chapter is, and we'll be talking about whatever I pulled out of there for the passwords. I probably won't be posting clues until the following week, so I never post on time anyway. Just ping me and be like, Prof Lynette, <laughs> what's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? Are we in? That, let's transition. Okay. Oh, did I play it? I don't know. <laughs> did it play? I don't know. I oh, now it's, now it's going, now it's going. Just so awkward. We're like, oh. We the headphones well, are attached. They're just not the in my ear. In my <laughs> They're head. just not in my Magical Theory podcast time. One's ready. <laughs> Turn to page 716. 700. Yeah, we've read 700. Pages. The beginning. Oh, gosh. Yeah. An ironic title. <laughs> Today's lesson is called Truth and Honor. Mm. The chapter begins with Harry in a blur of pain and memory taking small solace in being alone with Hermione and Ron. Hagrid gets Harry to smile for the first time since the graveyard. <laughs> he shares with the trio his expectation that Voldemort would return and his readiness to fight. Karkaroff and Bagman are both fled to parts unknown. At the final feast, Dumbledore honors Cedric <laughs> and Harry by telling the school the truth that Voldemort killed Cedric, that he was back and powerful, and that Harry fought him. On the train home, Hermione reveals she captured Rita Skeeter, an unregistered animagus. Malfoy, Crab, and Goyle enter to bully, but get wrecked by jinxes and hexes from many sources. Fred and George reveal that Bagman fled over his debts and that he had swindled them out of their winnings at the Quidditch World Cup. Harry decides to give them his winnings from the tournament. You actually did write Get Wrecked. I, that's what I went to go yes, check. I was I like, did he write that? <laughs> that's funny. I enjoyed Sad it. Trick. This is, okay, so actually this goes on that shelf that's behind me. Um, it had other stuff on it, and at the moment, it's just a shelf with this portrait of Cedric Degree, which was drawn by uh, Vince Alvandia, who is an artist in San Diego. Uh, but it's just funny because that's like the little unintentional altar to Cedric. It just yeah, I saw it the other funny. day because you had pulled stuff from it, and I was like, oh, Cedric's just all alone down there. <laughs> oh, poor Cedric. Yeah. Yeah, poor Harry is so the first the thing end. that I wrote. Poor Harry. Yeah. It's the end, but it's the beginning of a new war. Yeah. Ish. I mean, it's like the beginning of you know, get ready. I mean, it's like school, like students are uh, avoiding him because Dumbledore was like, give yeah. him space or whatever. I mean, yeah, there's a lot going on. I, there's a lot going on. It's like Harry, when he first, I mean, Harry didn't really have any friends. Everyone was like, well, the chosen one. And now we're back, but it's like, well, actually, Harry does periodically go through this where people just talk about him and say stuff. And Yeah, I mean, especially in book two. Yeah. Not I, nice. You know, I, yeah. The quote that I wrote down, of course, and this is why Hagrid is in the thumbnail, not just because of Robbie Coltrane, but because yeah. uh, he says to Harry, no good sitting worrying about it. What's coming will come and we'll meet it when it does. And Harry yeah. recites it at the end yeah. of the book. It's just very wise. It is. It is. And the thing that's super freaking dark is that they've been... Hagrid and the adults have been through this already and it's kind of like okay like we're bearing down we're we're getting ready like yeah. and <clears throat> it's not here yet but we will have to do some stuff in the near future you know it's and I wrote down like this is wild because these kids at Hogwarts were infants or toddlers they were born during the first wizarding war and then i mean the first and second year maybe second years would be after it would be after but even still like their parents would have lived through a war <laughs> yes. already yes and here we are again you know <clears throat> it's yeah a it's a lot it's a lot 
I mean, coming off the heels of all these revelations and the exposition of the last chapter and Dumbledore setting these things in motion and and now Snape is back at the school, but he's, you know, looking like Snape. I mean, the real Moody is out. The classes are canceled. Bagman is gone. Karkrov is gone. Yeah. I thought the scenes with Crum and Fleur are nice capstones to the book, this idea, because it is somewhat like the hope in the darkness there is mm. like what Dumbledore is saying is like, well, you know, Voldemort wins because he separates people mm -hmm. and you have an, you students have an opportunity to strengthen bonds with people that you otherwise wouldn't have known. Yeah. And it strikes me as as really fun. Obviously, Ron asking for the autograph is just a great. I love moment. that so yeah. much. It made me <laughs> laugh out loud because he's just like Grr, autograph, like it just yeah, kind of like, it, <laughs> last chance. Like, pleased by it. Yeah, he, he's like you know. Let me sign this piece of parchment for you. <laughs> and Crump Crumb's scene is really interesting because we really get a quick in. A quick look in to like Karkarov just sucks. Yeah. And Crumb doesn't like him. No, he does not. It's clear. Like, yeah, it's clear. Yeah. He's like, oh, you know, he made us do the work. He doesn't, he didn't steer. Yeah. I wonder if this chapter inspired, or I mean, there's probably lots of inspirations for Harry Potter Wizards Unite. That's what I was thinking of is that like coming together. Mm. And of course, Malfoy, Crab, and Goyle are a little, you know, the yeah. worst <laughs> still. I, what I was wondering, because I don't know how long of this period of time was between the death and end of year, because yeah, it seemed like there was some time something, with it, the like, classes, no classes and yeah, left, all yeah. of that. Like, surely Malfoy's parents, actually all of their parents, probably talked to them and okay, said here's stuff, a question, you know? Okay, hmm. Do Death Eaters tell their children that they're Death Eaters? Absolutely. Really? I would think so. What, what's the kid I gonna do? I don't understand Death Eaters. <laughs> <laughs> Rat you out? Actually, I don't. I don't know. You think so? I don't have any shame about it. They're they're happy. I think it's kind eaters. of like an internal family thing of like if you're a but part Narcissa of something. Narcissa isn't even a Death Eater. That yeah. We know of. Well, she yeah. So she, she's like a. Hmm. Enabler. <laughs> she's an enabler. I mean, she's bad. Don't get me wrong, but she's not in her circle. Yeah. It's. I don't know. I mean, she clearly knows that Lucius is. They open their freaking house to Voldemort to be. When like, do you tell your child that you're a Death Eater? Is it like Santa son? Claus? It has to be like they turn eight, and you're like, <laughs> "Oh, hey, crab." You reading about Death Eaters there? They probably, so within the, like, confines of their own home, confines is a weird word to use, but, like, in the safety of their own home, they probably have just frank conversations. Like, it's it's kind of, it reminds me of, like, I mean, I don't know if this is the case, but, like, my parents had conversations thinking that I wasn't listening, but, like, I'm there, like, I hear things, like, just, it's not anything, they're not Death Eaters, to be clear, my parents are not Death Eaters, but, like... Children are more perceptive, I think, than we give them credit for. They notice things, or they hear things, or they just can sense things yeah, more. Yeah, and... so it could be inference. Yeah. I was just wondering how explicit it was. Also, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there are ranks of Death Eaters. I, it seems like it, in the in the previous in the graveyard scene, Voldemort kind of lists them out, and I think we mm. established that the ones that weren't there who weren't dead were the two Lestranges and Barty Crouch Jr. Yeah. Which Im implied that Narcissa is not, at least in the inner circle. Does she wind up getting the mark? Does she already have it? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't think she is. She's just yeah. sisters with one and married to one. <laughs> just... And mother to one. <laughs> She's just in a Death Eater sandwich. Whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's weird, too. Well, okay, so, like, we... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what... Uh, if there are ranks of Death Eaters, this, this question. <laughs> um, 
you have like definitely more i don't think they have like an official hierarchy it's just kind of like oh voldemort I likes you more do. you think they do yeah because there there are people that are allied with voldemort that don't have the dark and mark they do and not aren't know in the inner who circle the inner circle is otherwise they would have been able to say like it's malfoy i mean i know that he used the imperious yeah, curse excuse the you'd movies... think there'd be some kind of test for that be like oh were you actually under the imperious curse and you're like yeah. hey let me see oh no you've never had a cast on you liar i mean Azkaban. honestly like y'all are witches and wizards why haven't you figured this gotta out be by now something there's gotta <laughs> be something you can't be bamboozled <laughs> oh by this oh my gosh I, I would do that as a student then i'd be like no sorry i was under the imperious curse yeah yeah give me a break when do you tell your parents you are a death eater <laughs> Apparently never. Mom, Dad, yeah, Avada Kedavra. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean. I my point. That, so, and then I had a secondary thought that was related to this. Yeah. Which is, it was very explicitly said that Malfoy, Crab, and Goyle, and some of the Slytherins haven't touched their goblets and aren't standing. Do some oh, of them did stand? Did it say some? Yes, it says some. Oh. Oh. Do some of them stand? What an interesting yeah. Because I feel like it rea- some of them relationship. Some of them should have stood. <laughs> Otherwise, Dumbledore would his eyes would have been directed to that area if none of them. Well, I don't stood, buy that know? Dumbledore doesn't see it. Well, in the yeah, first place I think then. I yes, I think he is just you know it's, he's not going to react in that moment because no, that's he's, not. he's trying to promote a message of unity. He's not going to call out. No, some, no, no. I almost said about. But we word. should really do so some <laughs> work. I mean, we should really do some work on, like, teaching these kids how to, you know, have better emotional intelligence. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that there's not some sort of, like, like, you. I don't think that you doing it in public would do anything, but, like, having some private interactions... Like Dumbledore is talk is the one talking about building relationships, but it doesn't appear that he's trying to build a relationship with Draco or the other Slytherins that seem to be rude. Well, if you, you know? really picture this, this is a school. Mm-hmm. You have a student who dies, mm-hmm. you're giving them like a moment of silence, and you have students who aren't standing. Yeah. So like this is extremely divisive. Yeah. And the idea is <clears throat> Yeah, but it's very obvious that their parents are Death Eaters. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they said, imper- oh, I was imperious. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. then your kid would be like as pissed at Voldemort as anybody else, yeah. maybe more. But instead, they're just like, yeah. Yeah. What I'm Voldemort. saying is that, like, Woo! what are you gonna do? You're gonna force them to like I'm not stand up, that. and I'm that's gonna that. be like not real. I'm I'm not saying yeah, that. I know, I, I I'm just thinking like this is. <laughs> This is evidence <laughs> of something. Your parents are clearly death eaters. Your parents are clearly death eaters. Yeah, but I guess until they commit a crime that and they have evidence to charge them for that crime, even though they send people to Azkaban all the time, Hagrid, yeah. well, maybe not all the time, but without evidence that fully backs up the charge. I don't know. There's got to be an in-between to our earlier There discussion. has to be an in-between, it's, like a holding cell. Yeah. <laughs> Detention. Like, make it... Oh, okay. So something else in the chapter. It was after the Ron sort of situation where he's like autograph. Yeah. On the train, Hermione also made me laugh really hard because she pulls out freaking Rita Skeeter and yeah. she's like, "Oh, I put these like unbreakable charms on this or whatever." And I, this is why in the future she becomes Minister of Magic is that she yeah, is very clever and it's just like, "Oh yeah." Clearly, I would have thought through that she could just bust out of... I guess that's what would happen when you unanimagus form is you bust out of the glass. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. This is very dark. It is very dark to capture a person and imprison them. Yes, it is, but... And not... She could have, if she wanted to, Uh never told anyone. She could have, yes. Is intense. Hermione, Hermione is, is like intense. she's more casual with the means. Is the means the right way of like how she seeks justice? I guess. Yeah, she the Petrificus whole, is Neville. The whole book, I'm like, girl, go tell an adult, go tell somebody something about Rita Skeeter. But no, she's like, 
I'm going to handle it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to veer to serum my employees to see who is the mole for Harry Potter Wizard Unite causing the calamity. You know, it's very consistent with her. Yes. So props for the writer in Wizards Unite who is like, you know what? Hermione would do this something like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when she feels oh that she gosh. cannot do it by normal means. Yeah. She's not going to convince Rita Skeeter to not write these things. Yeah. But it's intense. She could have just gone. <laughs> yes, we talked about this. Like, it's not like D&D wild it just, shape just where pops she pops out, out and is like, oh, she just Rita. dies. Yeah. Well, because I was wondering, I was like, so in the last chapter, she smacked and she grabbed, she basically grabbed Rita. So... I was thinking, I was like, okay, well, Rita should have, like, there was some period of time between the snatching and Hermione casting a, a, a charm on a jar and popping her in there, right? That she could have just popped out. There, were, there should have been at least a moment where Hermione was not Hello. around other people that Rita could have popped out, busted her hand open, and was all right i'm gonna take you know? I'm, I'm gonna take the liberty and say hermione is smart enough to be maybe she made the charm there or like did something temporary yeah 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 but i agree it, i mean it's maybe she petrificus the uh, animagus rita stunner <laughs> yeah so yours says murder is a bit much so this is why this is an in-between I'm, yeah. I'm not saying i'm just saying no it, he's it sets a dangerous oh sure <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't pop her. Don't pop her. She needs to be tried. And but that's the thing is that you're not going through official channels. But no. I, I guess Hermione no. has learned over the years that like gotta break rules. Apparently, you gotta break rules because the adults can't handle it. You have a minister for magic who basically brought a deadly. I mean, a, a dementor to have a conversation with a Death Eater who has information, and the dementor killed him. Yeah. Why was the dementor even there? Is he friends with that Dementor? He just like called it down. And was like, "Hey, uh, no, but I'm saying, Steve, come over. This is his secret service me. agent. Is a Dementor? <laughs> I wonder he's grumpy. How do you train a Dementor? How do you converse? This is how what I never understood: is how do you interact with a Dementor and it not immediately try to do the Dementor's kiss on you? How does that <laughs> work? He's like, oh, let me." eat your brains or soul or whatever. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's just, you know, Fudge <laughs> is the worst. Rita is somehow worse than the worst. Yeah. Yep. And yep. then there's Bagman. Yeah. I mean, this is a great sub There is a lot. It's such a great secondary mystery. The B story. <laughs> I mean, the prime, this is one of the things that we often do at the end of the books is we talk about, these are mystery books. And, yeah. And the fourth book's mystery is who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire. Harry. That is the, that's the mystery. Yeah. Where if you could answer that question, you know. And we it's talked like about how the generic mystery of the whole book, uh -huh. the whole series is, is Snape good or bad? Mm. Yeah, we're even talking and about once Snape you here. have the, the the answer, then everything else resolves. That is the crux of the whole series: is the chapter with the pensive and Snape's memories. And after you have that, everything else is clear. There's almost no more primary mystery going on. Mm. And in this book, it's once you learn that it was fake Moody. Everything else resolves because mm -hmm. the, it's the mystery isn't who is moody because that that's just clues. Yeah, you, it's who put the name in the Goblet of Fire. But this is a great secondary Harry. one of like, what are Fred and George doing? What's their <laughs> deal? What is their deal? Why did they accost Bagman? Who are they writing to? Like, why are they putting their heads together and seem yeah. upset and frustrated? There's the scene in the owl. I believe it's in the owlry where like. They're coming and going, and mm -hmm. I think Harry's sending something to Sirius, and they're just like, well, why are you up here? Why are you up here? And they're like, yeah. no, don't, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to tell you type thing. I love how Harry's just like, who have you been blackmailing? Yes. <laughs> just like, that's right. Finally, that's right. just tell us, okay? Yes. They even <laughs> overhear that word, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But they it's really satisfying because we already knew about the gold, mm -hmm. leprechaun's gold, because of Ron and Harry. Yeah. 
we knew it had something to do. The only scene we've ever, the only, like, in some sense, the only thing it could be is about the bet. What, that's the right. only thing we've yeah. seen between Bagman and the twins. It's not that, like they're like, hanging out. They're like, hey, anything. Ludo. <laughs> yeah. And, like, they didn't know him already. And, right, yeah. And then, like, the, the clue is right there that, like, Leprechaun Gold, Quidditch World Cup, Leprechaun Gold, 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 Gold. They won. They mm-hmm. won the bet, which means a lot of money. But, like, why are they mad? Why do they keep going up to him? Well, he didn't pay them. Yeah, I don't remember what how much the bet was. It was big odds. He just... It's all generic. He's like, oh, oh. We'll get good odds for that one. Because they okay, say, okay. like, Crumb will get the Because I was trying to compare it one. to the thousand. Yeah, I don't know. That it depends on how much they about. put down, which I think that is explicit, but we don't know the Yeah, odds. yeah, yeah. Uh, I love how <laughs> not only did Harry, Ron, and Hermione in that train car, Hex, Draco, uh, Crab, and Goyle, which, first of all, Draco, uh, Draco is the worst. Like, the absolute worst. The absolute worst. He is about to say something completely awful about one of the people who was probably one of the nicest people at Hogwarts to exist. (laughs) And it wasn't just them, but also Fred and George hexing them. And I was like, oh, yeah. Getting wrecked. And then they, like, just tossed them into the... I'm imagining that people, you know, the trolley uh, witch just being like, oh, let me just, like levitate my cart over you and just like step over you and just leave you in the middle of the <laughs> the, the the walkway unconscious <laughs> i like it's either fred or george they have a very academic mm. for all of the you know they're not traditionally like scholarly because they they just aren't they're asymmetrical you know they're, they're kind of like I'm, I'm gonna do it my way mm-hmm. but then he's like Oh, who used the frenunculus curse? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, they seem to like not behave well, and it makes a lot of sense because they're experimenters, they're inventors. Yeah. So the, and and they like, often oh, are combining things and mm-hmm. like seeing that there are these weird side effects. Mm-hmm. It really speaks to nobody else would probably that. even. Yeah. It's not like Harry was like, "Oh, look at this. This is weird." He's just kind of like, "I hate this guy." You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's Harry Potter. In yeah. A <laughs> Drink all. <laughs> Oh, man. No, he's more stoic than that, but he does hate him. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I, I, Fred and George, the use of the Weasleys in many of the books is really great. Yeah. Okay, so it's really, really nice. Like, M- Molly has scenes in this chapter. Oh, yeah. Obviously, Fred and George throughout Percy in the second one. Per- uh, obviously, Ginny in the second book. Yeah. I don't know, for Prisoner. Oh, the Brat is a Weasley rat. <laughs> Warm tail. The rat is a Weasley rat. Well, we also had Charlie pop in for a hot Charles. Second. Charles was there. Charles. William was also there. William. Bill was born in 1970 when supposedly the first Wizarding War began. That was the fun fact that I learned because I don't know when anyone is born. Hmm. I don't know. Um. At the end, Harry is just the sweetest little chosen Giving one. Away the gold. Yeah. He's so nice. And the Diggories don't. And he said, oh, yeah, the Diggories wouldn't accept it. it. And then Harry's just like, just freaking take it. I'm going to. I'm going to hex you. Yeah, yeah. First, he says he's going to throw it away. And then he's like, I'm going to hex you because he knows. He knows that they're go- this is going to keep going on. So he just like it leaves. It is, <laughs> for me, an extremely satisfying conclusion. It's mm-hmm. extremely satisfying. Yeah. I, it like, it just fits their, everyone's personalities. Yeah. Particularly Harry. He's, he doesn't want this money. No, he he's doesn't. He's not going to, he's not going to use it. He's not going to buy anything. He's going to, it's going to always feel undeserved and yeah. tainted to him. Yeah. And the, the, the twist on it, and I like that it's vocalized and he's like, no, we need jokes. That I wrote down. I like that it's vocalized. It's not like implied. He wrote, or he said, we could all do with a few laughs. And so, okay, everyone that is paying attention is, and not like ignoring it, is uh, aware that there's probably going to be another war. First of all, you had like a first death. You know that Voldemort is back. Bad things are coming. We're not supposed to worry about it, but what can we do right now? We can just, you know, we could use a good laugh. 
And I wrote down <laughs> the Bo Burnham lyric, should I be joking at a time like this? Because of the context of like, the complexity of any given moment in time, given that there's tragedy and we can still feel, we can still recognize the, the you know, severity of the situation, but also full, feel a full range of human emotions. Yes. And because this is going to be more of a marathon, you can't exhaust everything out with just like worry and like non-productiveness. Like you need to still sustain to be able to get through, well, right? And, and the fruits of this action are by the time the sixth book rolls around and Voldemort is out in the open and Diagon Alley is basically Nocturne Alley mm -hmm. and everything is shut down, there's still Weasley wizarding wheezes. Yeah. That's like because people this beacon still, yep. mm -hmm. in an otherwise uh, dreary place. Yeah. And setting. And obviously there's a price that gets paid, but it's it's uh, satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. I've always, always liked that moment. I, I just always really liked it. I think it's first, I mean, it wraps together like two two parts. I mean the the Triwizard tournament ending mm -hmm. has a mean has a has a you know, an actual meaning. It's not like, oh, it just it just existed in this book and whatever, you know. I really, I mean, I love that book. I love the fourth book. Yeah. It's not my favorite one, but I do really like it. It's really good. I think once I got past the middle with all, like, the annoying teenage stuff. <laughs> I mean, Ron wasteland. and Hermione are still angsty at the end. Yeah, like, I'm just like, oh, gosh, can you all just... Yeah. Make out already. I, I, like. I do really like the <laughs> asking for the autograph. It is such a teenage well, thing. Well, she's it's also the, mad at Ron for being nice to Fleur. And I'm like, yeah, Hermione, I know. I know. get over I it. I know. It's no, fine. it's good, though, because it shows the sort of the yeah. people have both. Yeah. Uh, everyone has both. And so, like, he was so jealous of her and it's such a big part. And then, like, you see that flare up and be like, okay, well, you know. What is emotional intelligence if not like recognizing somebody else's feelings in yourself? It's... Yeah. And they get there. They get there. It takes them a while. And Harry's going to see Thestrals next book. I know. Thestrals are coming. And Luna. Oh, yeah. yeah. Little Luna. Yeah. Looney Lovegood. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> End the of longest book four. Book. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. We just have a million more That's chapters to go. <laughs> All right, that's all I have. Until next time, Wands Ready. ready.